In this video, we'll create an enemy AI so the enemy character can chase the player, attack the player, and can be killed by the player. Alright, let's go to the models folder and let's uh, drop in the score model that I provided on Blackboard. So here we have a uh, Word document, uh, so that's the loads for the animation clips. Okay, so let's select this uh, animation model, go to its animation tab, and here down below, we're gonna create the animation clips. Okay, as you can see, this whole thing, it has two animations, right? So I'll create one, uh, the first one, uh, we can just copy the name at here. Uh, so make sure your animation clip uh, has the exact same name. I posted it here because later on we're going to reference the name of the animation in the script. Okay, so this is the first one, frame 10 to 50. So here I'm going to press return key to confirm the change. Frame 10 to frame 50. And I want to loop the time because this is a walk cycle. I want it to keep looping and apply. And the second one will be a scroll depth. Okay, so here add one more and put the name here, return key to confirm the change, S and D as caps locked, and 62, 125. And don't loop because this is a death animation. We only want it uh, to play one time. Then let's right click and let's create an animation controller. And we can say scroll anim animation. You know. And you can double click on to open the animation controller and go to the scroll. And we're going to bring in the walk animation. So we can set this one as the default animation. Uh, okay. And then we'll drop the death animation in here, so don't connect them together. So the death animation will be owning code uh, once the scroll is dead. Okay, and as long as the scroll is uh, alive, you will keep looping the walk animation. So that is the animation controller. Uh, we'll go back to the scene and let's uh, turn on the direction light so we can see the objects. And here we can do the same thing as we have done before. So we can select this one and command D to make a duplication and uh, we can rotate this duplicated light to a different location a uh, different angle so we can see our objects uh, well just to use this light as a reference uh, okay I think that's enough all right and then let's uh, drop in our scroll model into the scene and wherever you want to place so here I want to aim it to the um, the player so here I can just rotate 90 degree right if I press W key you can see that the blue arrow is aiming to the player so he's facing the player um, and on this scroll I'm going to add a animator animation controller right so animator and then going to apply the school enemy onto it so now if you test a play uh, this school will play the uh, the work animation okay so now let's give it some AI uh, let's drop in a script so go to the script folder and go to the school and let's drop in the scroll chasing script into here okay so it'll be here all right so now let's select the scroll model and let's add a script uh, scroll chasing and as you can see after I applied it there's a nothing we have to apply uh, so let me show you how this script looks because later, later on we're going to uh, spawn this scroll model uh, so it will be generated by system. Okay. Uh, in that case, we don't want to make the object as public, so we don't have to apply it. Uh, the score model will 
look for our player once it's born. Okay, so here's the function. So here we have a navigation uh, agent scroll and the target. So the target will be the player. So as this scroll is initiated in the game, so it'll look for a target. So the target object is a object that with a tag, tag the player. So it'll find with the tag player. So it all really as a uh, target. And the scroll will be the navigation agent uh, that we applied. Okay, so it'll get its component, this component. And what I'm going to do is this scroll, it'll set to a new location. And the location will be the target position. So that is the function of the script. Um, so once it's once it's born in this in the game, it'll look for the player, right? So since here we are using the navigation uh, mesh agent, and uh, here we're going to add a component. We're going to add a navigation mesh agent, so it will be able to navigate around in the scene. And we can set the stop distance as about 2.5. So when it is 2.5 meters away from the player, it's going to stop. Then we'll have to define the map as a navigation mesh. Right, so I'll we'll select the CD and press F key to zoom out. Okay, uh, first, before we move further, uh, as you can see here, the center of the city is a flashing. Uh, so that is the arrow with the modeling. So when I created the model of the floor, I didn't notice, you know, I put a double faces here in the center. So if you have took uh, the 3D modeling class with me, you understand what is that. Uh, you just have to select the floor B and turn it off. So we'll get rid of that mesh. That mesh has some problem. Okay, so now we'll select the CD and go to Window and go to AI Navigation. So you're going to jump to this Navigation tab and go to Bake and make sure check on Show Navigation Mesh. Check the on. Uh, and we'll bake. Uh, you can see that nothing happened here. So that is because you know, with the CT selected, it is not checked as uh, static. So all of the model has to be static in order to apply navigation mesh. So we all see, yes, apply it to all of the children objects. So now if we go back to navigation and bake again, so this time you can see that uh, it creates this uh, light blue thing. As you can see, even on the roof, it has this uh, light blue thing, which is a navigation map. So our uh, enemy character will only walk inside of this area. So here for the darker area, our enemy will not be able to enter those areas. Okay, so now uh, if I save the game and if I test a play, you should see that the scroll model will jump and come to our player when the game is awake. And it'll stop at about 2.5 meters. Now we'll make uh, this is called character to be able to attack our uh, player. So I'll just right click on it, uh, create a cube. And for this cube, we'll say it's called weapon. Okay. And we can make it uh, smaller. And just make it like a stick. And we're going to push it out like this okay and for this object I'm going to turn off the mesh render and uh, the I'll keep the box collider and here for the tag I'll add a tag and I'll see enemy so make sure caps log E and save okay so we'll use this um, tag as a reference uh, to, to damage the character. So for this go weapon, let's tag it as enemy. So whenever this uh, weapon object collide with our player, our player will be damaged. So we're going to add that script in the later lesson. So let's focus on this quote for now. Uh, so this will attack our um, player. And then let's add a uh, audio listener, audio player. So select this goal, and here we're going to add a component, and we'll see audio source. So here we're going to play the um, the uh, score sound. So we're going to check on play on week, and we're going to loop. Um, 
here max distance let's do about 16 and manner roll off so it, the sound can fade out and I'll change it to a 3D sound so we can have the 3D environment okay so let's go to the sound effects let's go to the sound effects and find the scroll sound and scroll depth sound and let's drop them in here okay and select the scroll and go to the audio source you just created and apply the scroll sound to it so now when we play the game, we should hear the school sound. And now let's add the, uh, the health script for the character. So select the school object and go down here. Let's add a, um, a box collider. So this box collider will be served as the health trigger. So whenever the bullnet hit this trigger, it's going to deduct uh, the health value. So for this box collider, I want to make it a little bit narrowed. So let's shift the center up and narrow down on the X value and Z value, right? And as you can see, I shift the center here and I keep it uh, for this space and down to here is because remember when we play the game, the, uh, this scroll is kind of jumping. So we're going to uh, walk in this area. So we want to make this a health trigger to cover this whole area. And make sure to check on its trigger. And then uh, I'm going to go back to the script and scroll AI and I'm going to load the scroll health script to here. So drop the scroll health script in here. And then with the school character still remains selected, and here we're going to add a component, add a school health. Again, as you can see, we don't need to apply any objects here because by default, you're going to look for objects and you're going to uh, function in without any public object. To use this uh, script, the order we place this object matters, which I'm going to explain later okay so here let's just follow the order I have here um, let's place this cool weapon on top of here as you do that it will see you will have to restructure the prefab instance because this is, was a prefab that we dropped directly from here right so we can just right click on here and prefab and we're going to break the prefab so just click on unpack and now you should be able to bring this cool weapon to here and also here in this uh, right click and create an empty object. Here we're going to see scroll death sound. Okay, so and uh, drop it here. So make sure scroll death sound is the first child object of this uh, scroll folder, and scroll weapon is the second child object. Uh, this order matters. Okay, I'm going to explain. So here for the scroll death sound, let's drop a audio source and for the audio clip let's bring in uh, scroll death scroll death sound and make sure I play on wake so once this object is awake it's gonna play the sound and uh, max distance let's do 16 as well manner roll off uh, 3d sound okay and then we can deactivate it because we don't want the depth sound to put uh, to play by default. So once this uh, school character dead, uh, I'm going to play this sound. All right, uh, so now if I select the school and if I uh, open this uh, script here, school health. So this is a script basically um, when a object tagged as a bullnet enter this trigger. So that is the trigger we have created on here, the box collider, which is this one. Right, so whenever the boolean object enter this trigger, and you're going to proce process this function. So here is basically is a play the death animation. So you're going to grab this game object, which is the object that apply this script. Okay, so you're going to grab the component audio source. And you're going to deactivate. So that is uh, here. So that is this audio source that played this cool sound. 
the default sound, so you're gonna deactivate it, and you're gonna also play the school death animation clip, and it will get the first child object index number zero. So basically, the first child object, and it's going to activate it. So that is the death sound. So you're gonna activate that one. So you're gonna play, and it'll also get to the second child object and deactivate. So that is a school weapon. So you're gonna deactivate this weapon. And it will also get its components called chasing and going to deactivate. So school chasing script basically it allows it to set destination as a player destination, right? So it'll deactivate that. So uh, the enemy character will stop searching for the player and following the player. And also because our player was moving, so we want it to stop immediately. So we will deactivate the navigation mesh, which is uh, here, so you're gonna deactivate it, so the speed will set as a zero immediately. All right, so now let's give it a try. All right, so now let's work on the attack function. So when we create this weapon object, we have tagged it as an enemy, right? So now let's go to our player, first person controller, and. Uh, here we go. And let's right click and create a 3D object, a cube. And for this cube, let's uh, make it a little bit bigger. So we're going to use this cube as the trigger for player health. Um, so whenever the enemy object enter this trigger, we want to deduct our player's health and eventually the enemy will be able to kill our player. So the size I would like to do maybe 2.6 for the width. Something like this. And if I uh, if I check on its trigger. Okay, so this will be a trigger. So now let's apply script to it. So go to the script folder and let's drop in the player health script to here. Right, so here's the script, and let's uh, select the trigger player health, and let's uh, apply this uh, script onto here. You can just uh, drop it here. Mm, okay, let's just add it here. Player health. So here's the script. So here are the public objects we would like to add. So the player is the player itself. This whole folder. Okay. Uh, health value, so we don't have to change anything here for health display. So we're going to create instruction. Uh, so let's add the heard sound first. So let's uh, right click on first person character and uh, create empty. Let's see, player heard sound one, and let's add a audio source and let's uncheck play on wake, uncheck loop, and make it a 3D sound, and then there, loop off, and we can do max distance about 16, okay, so this is the setting, and let's uh, duplicate it multiple times, and then rename it, so this is the second one, this is the thir third one, the reason why we do this is because we're going to bring different version of heard sound so we can create some variables. Uh, so now let's go to the sound effects folder. Go to here sound effects. And let's drop in the player heard sound into here. And then let's just apply them one by one. So for the first one will be the first sound. Okay, second one will be the second sound. Okay, and then let's see. So we're going to select our player health trigger and go down here. And we're going to apply them one by one. So the script will randomly choose one of these clips to play and then health display. So we're going to come to the canvas here. 
Okay, so for the canvas, uh, I will go to tool menu, uh, game object, and create a new UI, a text, and I'll say help. Okay, and then select it and go to the text box. I'll type the same thing and make it uh, 6 uh, 20 as a size, uh, color as white. So we want this text to be the heads up, you know, display. So we can place it on the right top corner, something here. Right, and then we'll make uh, another duplication and we'll place it here. And this one, I'm gonna see how display. And for the health display, I'm gonna type uh, a number here. So this is our initial value. Okay, and then we can select our uh, trigger player health. And for the health, health display, we can just drop this uh, text at here. So the script will be able to access this text and change the number whenever the enemy attack it. Okay, and end the screen basically is whenever you know uh, our player was killed and we want to show a screen we want to pause the game and show the buttons uh, so here we can come back to here canvas and we can go to game object again and UI and we're going to create a button so for this button I'm gonna say main menu and go to the text here main menu and for the button, let's place it in the center approximately, around here, okay? And I'll make a duplication and uh, drop it down. So here I can say, quit. And quit. So we can give the function, the clip function later on. So here I will also duplicate this text health text and put it here and see you lost and copy it and paste it at the text here okay and then uh, let's select the canvas and right click and let's create an empty so here will be lost screen and then we can drop this, uh, oh no, these are three here into the nose screen. So basically this will show in, uh, will display whenever our, uh, our player is killed. So we can hide it, okay? So we'll leave these two on because this is a heads up display. All right, so now if I select the player health trigger and here for the end menu, I can just, uh, oops, I can just, drop the lost screen onto here. Here, let's go also go to this trigger's uh, mesh render and turn it off. So basically, here. So turn off the mesh render, so it'll be transparent. So if I let the scroll approaching to me, and as you can see, now the health value get to 90, now 80, 70, So as you can see, uh, as the health value gets to zero, we have this screen and it says you lost and everything is frozen and you can click the button to go back to main menu or quit. Okay, so now let's take a look at how the script works. So basically in the beginning, uh, we gave the player 100 uh, as the health value and every time uh, the enemy attack our player, the damage will be 10. And here we have the game object, the player, and the health display. Okay. And so here, let's see. Uh, you can ignore this part, print. So basically in the beginning for print, uh, this doesn't do anything for a game. It just uh, print something here at the bottom of a Unity program. So it is for testing purpose. 
Okay, so in the beginning, you're gonna print, you know, your health value is 100. So the, this is the health value, gonna print the value. And whenever uh, the enemy character enter this trigger, you're going to change the intact range status at 2. So here we created a boolean. Uh, and for boolean, it has a false or true status, right? So you're gonna change the status to 2. And you're also going to process the coroutine, which is a hard player, which is this function. So if the enemy exit this trigger, the player health trigger, you're going to change the in attack range as false. Okay, so while the enemy is inside of this uh, trigger, process this function, so here's the function. So you're going to, you know, you're going to damage the health by the damage value, which is the 10, and also going to print this part at the bottom of our program. So enemies hurt you, your health value is the updated number. Okay. Um, and uh, here, the you're going to get the health display and get its component, the text, and you're going to display the text and display in this format. So basically you're going to display the health value. Okay. Um, and also you're going to play a health uh, sound. So this is, is an integer, so here as you can see, uh, player um, play heard sound, so it is an integer, so we can define the integer here. So for this integer, we give it a random number. So the random number is in the range between one to five. Okay, uh, so you're gonna pick up random number one, two, four, and if you pick up one, you're gonna play the heard sound one. Two, you're going to play heard sound two. Okay, so whatever sound you're going to play, you're going to wait for three seconds before you move forward. So if your um, enemy character is still in this trigger, so the intact range is two, right? And this uh, uh, coroutine is two, so you're going to repeat this process. So you're going to wait for three seconds, heart it again, wait three seconds, heart it again. Okay, so if your enemy exit, you're going to change uh, the intact range as false, so it'll stop this coroutine. Alright, and here's the update function. So if the player's health value is uh, smaller than or equal to uh, zero, so the health display will get the text and you're going to change it to zero. Okay, and the time scale, which is the game time scale, you're going to change it to zero, so everything's going to be freezed. And end menu is going to show up, which it has the main menu button, the quit button. And you're going to also get to the player's component, first person controller, and you're going to disable it. So that is the uh, player and first person control. So if it is disabled, we will not be able to move. And it will also enable the cursor and unlock the cursor. So we'll be able to uh, click on the screen. In the next video, we'll create a function that allows the player to step into a trigger and they're going to spawn the enemy character. And once the player destroys the nest, you're going to stop spawning.